Well, big finance is big business, and what else is the banking business about besides making money? Sure, these guys are meant to be looking after your money, but how much do they actually care? That's a question we can put to someone who sat at the top before, a former chairman of the executive board of Germany's Dresdner Bank, Herbert Walter. My first question to you is, was it one of your top priorities in that position being fair? Absolutely. Fairness to clients, to employees, is a very important uh, issue. And uh, transparency and sustainability, uh, of course, as well. But is it a balance, a balance that you have to strike between making money? It's a business, the banking business, and looking after people's money. Yes, of course. You try to balance short-term issues and the longer-term issues in your planning. You have a more short-term oriented view in your yearly, in your annual budgeting. And at the same time, you have a long-term plan, a three or a five-year plan, where you have more soft goals baked into that, into that plan. Is there also a plan when everything goes wrong? Of course, for certain uh, casualties, there is a plan and there is a necessity to have a plan. But banking is all about surprises. You in normally uh, have difficulty to really uh, guess what tomorrow actually brings. But when it comes as far as having to be bailed out, does, does that mean everything went wrong? There was no plan B? Good. When you look at what happened during the financial crisis, mm. then I think uh, what was not expected is that we got a liquidity problem on the one hand. And what also the financial community did not expect is that capital ratios are basically, or were basically not sufficient. This is a learning with hindsight. We mm. have to hold more capital and we have to have a much higher liquidity buffer. And I suppose that's why a banking supervisory uh, body is there to look after these sorts of things. Were they breathing down your neck in your position? Of course. I think the, uh, the regulator's task is one to provide you with your driving license, so to speak. And on the, on the other hand, to follow your movements quite closely. Uh, in the financial crisis, one of the problems was that the regulators probably too much concentrated on the individual institution and uh, forgot about the whole uh, system, the systemic uh, risk and in so far reform is very much focusing now also on systemic uh, risk. And I personally think this is very, very important because as an individual, be it a CEO or a CEO for a normal uh, bank employee, you do not have a clue what's going on in other institutions and uh, where there are linkages in the system, probably dangerous for, for the development of the banking and financial industry. OK, well, talking about dangers, we'll return to the question of Spain in a minute. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's take a closer look, though, at those Spanish lenders. Madrid has sent out its call for help, and it's a lot of money that the government needs for the banks, up to 100 billion euros. It's a dilemma for the state and for the whole of the euro area. Here's more. Until now, it's been like this. If a bank runs into difficulties, the money from the bailout fund goes to the country where the bank's located. Spain, for example. That increases the country's debt, but the banks get their money. They're stabilized. The problem is that the increased debt burden lowers investor confidence. Spain has more difficulty raising new money, so the bank jumps in, buying government bonds. That, in turn, burdens the bank. It's a vicious circle. The alternative, money from the bailout fund would go directly to the Spanish bank. That way, the government wouldn't have to pay back the money. The bank itself would be liable. Well, Mr. Walter, what do you think, first of all, providing direct aid to the banks, is it a good idea? Yes, this is basically a good idea, but it requires a couple of preconditions. Of course, what is general practice in a country like Spain today, I think is a no-go. Uh, Spain or Spanish banks took three years money from the ECB, hundreds of a billion, and then invested that money in buying government bonds. So they basically uh, uh, had a run the risk that in a couple of months, they probably get a downgrade because of the downgrading of the Spanish 
state bonds. And this, I think, is an interconnection, an interdependency, which is not good for the system at all. And another catch-22. What about the uh, latest comments from the governor of the Bank of Spain? He says banks that aren't viable should be wound down in an orderly way. Of course, I think uh, when you look uh, into what happened to uh, West LB, then I think winding down is a real alternative. And I think it's a, it's a very good development that also Spain uh, is uh, yeah, looking more and more realistically mm -hmm. on uh, potential options for future solutions for their banking system. Okay, Mr. Walter, thank you very much for your insight.